He is universally known as Triple Brownlow medalist Bob Skilton, as if he were christened that way. He is one of just four men to win the game's highest individual award three times. Welcome, Bobby. Thank you, Mike. Thanks very much. Three Brownlows, nine best and fairest at South Melbourne, one final. Now, you can take it two ways, can't you? You can cherish the one final you had or you can lament what might have been. Well, I think that's probably why I'm even, you know, prouder of what, you know, what the club does now. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, if we hadn't gone to Sydney, uh, I think we'd have folded. Uh, people have often said, why did I support Sydney? And, and that was the, the case. Uh, if, we, if we'd folded, I didn't have a club at all. Uh, I'd rather say that it was my club before they moved to Sydney than I haven't got a club at all. I give Richard Collis the credit for us now being uh, being respected. And that's, you know, it, it's nice to have a club that's respected. We never were in my day. Let's fast forward from there to 2012 and the Swans win a flag and you present the Premiership Cup. Where does that moment sit in your footy history? Yeah. Uh, on the wall at home and it's, uh, you know, from a sporting point of view, it's my proudest moment in life. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a team game. And, and to think that, you know, uh, I was presenting the cup, you know, for the premiership. Does that bring back memories for you? Uh, very much so, yeah. It's, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, an absolutely great shot, I reckon. It must be hard to distinguish. You said about the team game, and it is. No one's got more individual awards than you. But this is the one about what it's all about, isn't it? Playing with your mates and achieving something as a group. Oh, yeah. You know, and that was like 1970 was just so great, uh, you know, that uh, Norm Smith came along and uh, just, you know, got a little bit extra out of us and, uh, you know, we, we couldn't maintain it because we weren't quite good enough. 1970, Bob, was your only final, first semi-final against St Kilda at the MCG, 104,000 people in. What are your memories of that? How'd you play? Oh, yeah, average. Uh, it wasn't my, one, of, one of the greatest games, uh, but it was just great to be there uh, and it was great to get there. And, you know, the fact that we won enough games through the year, uh, you know, to be there and, and get that feeling of, of team success. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're playing a team game, the ultimate is team success. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been invited to the you know, Premiership Club uh, luncheons and everything else, but you know I've never ever gone because uh, you know uh, I didn't make it. Is that the sense of not belonging to something like that? Oh, you know, yeah, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Um, you know, they're all great blacks, and, and you know, but I'm just so envious of them. Uh, you know, like uh, one of my closest friends these days is Bluey Adams, who play with mm. Melbourne, and uh, you know, when they asked me to present the. Um, um, the Premiership Cup uh, to North Melbourne, you know, as it turned out, you know, going way back, uh, I, I wrote in the in the paper that day, you know, that, um, you know, I'd swap my Brownlows for a, a Premiership Cup and Bluey Adams, who played in six, rang me up and said, I'll swap you one. Yeah. North Smith coached Melbourne to six flags in ten years, goes to South Melbourne and lifts a mediocre team into the finals. I mean, did you, was the team good enough to play finals that year or was it the, the magic of Smith? I think a little bit of both. Uh, you know, we didn't have many injuries and, and you know, uh, when you get on a little bit of a roll, uh, you probably played better than you were. And, and you know, that next year we, we had quite a few injuries and, and such and we just weren't good enough to, to, to bring it up. But, you know, Smithy, you know, uh, he was just great at, at getting the best out of everybody and, uh, and, and such, uh, you know, a, a unique... A unique person. Uh, there was, uh, you know, in some on some occasions that he, he just had you petrified. Mm. <laughs> on other occasions, he had you eating out of his hand. Uh, but even you, even as, with your exalted status in that footy club, he could still rip into you. <laughs> and how? Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two hundred and thirty-seven games for the Swannies. Was there ever a moment in your career where you might have gone elsewhere? Ah, uh, you know. Not really, not really, because it it wasn't a done thing in in those days. Uh, not really is not no, Bobby. So was there was there an invitation to perhaps go to a stronger club? Uh, no, there was an invitation to go to Sydney and play rugby league. Really? Uh, yeah, but uh, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. So how serious was that? When was that? Oh, I'm hopeless on years and. Uh, but early in your career, or? Oh no, about the middle. Yeah. Mm. Big money. Mm. 
Uh, we didn't really get down to all that, you know. Devil you know, but then devil you don't know. But you would have loved, you, you, I mean, your love for uh, uh, Australian football would have um, taken precedence, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I, I like my rugby league. I'm, you know, pretty mm. much a Melbourne Storm supporter. Yeah. And I had an invitation to get in and, and train with the... Uh, with St George, and uh, you know, same colours, uh, red and white. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't do their, you know, their their ball work and, and such, but I I did the warm ups and, and everything else, and and I was quite surprised at at the fitness level of, of some mm. of those sort of little blokes and, uh, and and such. But I was more surprised, uh, you know, after the training, uh, you know. The boys said, "Well, come on, we we'll go down for a drink and, <laughs> and, and, and such." And, and they'd won uh, ten in a row at that stage. Yeah. And um, you know, after having a few drinks and everything else and whatever, and I, I, I can't make the Melbourne and said, "We're going about it the wrong way." If you win <laughs> ten in a row and living like that, you know. One of your old mates, Bobby, talking about the amber fluid. One of your old mates said that as good as you were, you would have been even better had you not been so keen on the uh, the liquid refreshment. Is that fair? No, no, I don't think so. I, I, I went seven years of league football before I tasted alcohol and and then it was only Saturday nights and, and footy trips. Uh, no, I don't think that's fair. I think I probably trained harder than, uh, than most. Mm. Is that what you, you... In your day, it was unusual for blokes to be equally proficient on both sides of their body as you were. What was the origin of that? And that was my dad, uh, you know, who... Uh, I never ever saw dad play. He played at Port Melbourne. Uh, he had, yeah, played 12 years at Port mm. and was captain and coach and, uh, and such. And we used to go over the park uh, after he came back from the war and uh, and um, he uh, he would say, oh, I don't want to kick it back unless you kick it with the other foot. Mm. And then when you start to get a little bit proficient and, uh, and such, you, know, you get a bit of a buzz about you know, being able to do it. Yep. And uh, it became pretty natural. Bobby, I've been trying to think of a contemporary player that reminds me of you. And the closest I can come is Simon Black. Left footer, not overly quick, smart, good vision, all that sort of stuff. Is that a fair comparison? Uh, I, you know, a bit umbridge at the not overly quick bit. But, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, you know, I think that is a compliment because I think Simon Black is one of my favourites. Uh, you know, like uh, you always have a few favourites and I just love the, the consistency of, of Simon Black and the way he, he went about it, you know, week in, week out. Is there a bloke in red and white that uh, you like to think that might resemble you? Probably runs a f bit quicker than, than I did, but, you know, I'd like to think Kieran Jack uh, is a little bit the same way. Amazing, isn't it? You talk Kieran Jack, the kid that grew up in a rugby, rugby league household, and now you're sort of happy to be compared with him. Oh, I just love the way he goes about it. Uh, you know, he's, he's been wonderful for us. And, and uh, you know, I like the look of his, of his brother, Brandon. Mm. Uh, he's coming through and... Uh, now, you know who good. won't like this chat? There's a bloke called Paul Kelly who inherited number 14 from you. Don't tell me that Kieran Jacks replaced Paul Kelly. No, nobody will ever replace Paul Kelly as my favourite footballer. <laughs> there he is. Now, did you, were you involved in the decision to give him 14? I mean, how did that come about? Um, well, the club asked me, you know, would I be happy? And, you know, I said, oh, fantastic. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, as I said, uh, nobody will ever replace Paul Kelly as my favourite footballer. Uh, the ever, way he, ever the play, that you've played with or seen? Yeah, you know, and I'm not saying he's the best or anything like that. He's, he's just my favourite. Just of his attack on the footy? Yeah, yeah, and the and the and the person himself and the you know the way he went about it. Let's go back to the start. You're 17. There's a few injuries at South Melbourne, and you've named to play in the first at 17. Would have been pretty rough in those days, wouldn't it? Oh, you know they they, they say it was, but you didn't you don't even think about those things, and you know. And, until you cop a few, and you know, and then you know, once you're out there, you realise that you know, uh, there's if you don't want to cop them, don't get the footy. Mm. <laughs> you know, they don't uh, they, they don't whack anybody who hasn't got the footy. That's true. You know? But you used to get it a bit, so you got whacked a bit. Yeah, well, it's part and parcel. Uh, was it brutal? You, I, mean, I can remember watching the footy then, and I think it was brutal. But you played it. Was it sort of excessively? Hard and tough? 
oh, you know, I think it's just as hard and just as tough now. The pace they go at and everything else, when they hit, they hit. Uh, I, I'm, I admire the players just as much now as I did the players then. You know, they've got just as much courage. They're, you know, they're, they're harder at it in many respects in, in some ways. So, but the game is different. It, it has changed. Uh, <laughs> it's changed, but you used to look like you had... Uh, a dartboard over your face. I mean, there was a lot of blokes took pot shots at it. And you, how many times was that handsome nose broken, Bobby? Oh, I don't count them. <laughs> <laughs> Double figures? You know, oh, yeah. Mm. You know, but, uh, yeah, Jack Refshorgi, you know, he, he wouldn't operate until I promised him I wasn't going to play another game. <laughs> <laughs> the famous, probably the most famous incident that you were involved in was when Eric Guy, the St Kilda halfback, ploughed through you at one point and put you to sleep for the best part of a half an hour. Do you remember the hit? No, I don't remember a thing about it. And uh, you know, Eric, uh, until he died, was a close mate. Uh, you know, he was playing for St Kilda. Mm. I was playing for South. And uh, you know, if uh, if Bordy had done the same thing to Ian Stewart or Daryl Baldock, you know, uh, you know, so be it. You were over the footy, weren't you? And he just played. Uh, through... Look, I don't know. You don't know. I don't remember no. a thing about it. Uh, you know, I just know I was out unconscious for quite a while. And they were starting to get worried and, uh, you know, and apparently called an ambulance and, uh, and so on. You mightn't even remember this. I was in the um, Hawthorne President's room after a game up at Princess Park. Um, Ron Cook was the president. You were working for Channel 7. You came in after the game and delicate Des Dixon spoke to you. And my view at the time was that you still hadn't forgiven him for treatment that he'd meted out to you on the football field. Uh, no, he hadn't, hadn't handed it out to me. Uh, you know, it had been to teammates of mine and I just didn't like the way he went about his football. You know. mm. So you didn't look like you'd forgiven him? Uh, no, you don't play footy that way. You know. I don't like snipers. You know. OK. So the bloke, so Eric Guy's not a sniper because that's... Uh, that was hard and tough yeah, and he yeah. was straight at the footy. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you're in the way, bad luck. After the break, your old mate EJ. Bobby, you've played two games of VFL football and uh, the legendary sports journalist Jack Cannon writes in the Argus <laughs> that this kid could win three Brownlow medals. Amazing, wasn't it? That, um, like, that is a big, bold prediction. I thought he was stupid. <laughs> well, you're entitled to. You're 17 and you've played two games of footy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, like people say things at times and everything, but, uh, you know... It really, it really comes out that way, and mm. uh, yeah, you know, I, well, did, I didn't even keep the, the copy of the. <laughs> we can get that for you. <laughs> the, the first brown is fifty nine. You're an apprentice plumber. You're coming home from uh, trade school, was it? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Pick up the story from there. Oh, I, you know, I caught the train home, and uh, it's uh, you know, I was walking down the street, and in those days it was only on the radio, and. Uh, and such, and I walked around into, you know, Griffin Crescent, where I lived in, in Port Melbourne, and all of a sudden people started to congratulate me. <laughs> and, uh, I, so you in your overall, in your work year? Oh, it would have been the night school. OK, yeah. You yeah. know, and, and, um, so I wasn't in my plumbing gear, no. And, um, but, uh, and you know, like, I, I thought they were kidding. So but, was it, did the Brownlow have an aura about it back then? Oh, nothing like now. No. Uh, but you know, you, it doesn't take long to realise that it that, that it really means something because mm. all of a sudden, you know, your house is full of people and there's you know more knocking on the door and reporters. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. photographers. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, so uh, you, you, know, you start to realise, hey, you know, this this is pretty good. As smart as rovers are and as brave as they are. The first place to be in the contest of the Ruckman. I've always been interested in your view about who was the better player out of John Nichols and Polly Farmer. You played with Nick in so many state games and you saw Farmer up close. Is there a, is there a gap between them? Uh, look, when you get into that standard, uh, you know, they're different. Nick suited me. Uh, you know, for me, Nick was, you know, Nick was the best uh, Polly's never forgiven me for saying it, but, you know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, like, I, I wouldn't mind, you know, if I'd, have, if I'd had to put up with raving at Polly all the time either. Mm, uh, mm. Yeah, and, in fact, people used to say, you know, why do you love playing for Victoria? Well, my ruckman in, in one game for Victoria were Nichols, Farmer, Schultz. 
And, you know, and I don't think most people realise just how good Schultz was. Mm. Uh, you know, he doesn't get the kudos because of Nichols Farmer. And because he played with a bloke called Ted Whitten. Yeah. Is Whitten still the best player that you've seen? Ah, oh, you know, yeah. Um, probably because he was my close mate and, mm. uh, you know, and, and everything else, you know. Right from the moment I got a game for Victoria, you know, uh, we were mates and, uh, you know, on and, on and off that the field. Day, Bobby? And, uh, yeah. I don't uh, want to make you emotional, mate, but you uh, you'd have vivid memories of that day, Teddy going around the MCG with his son. I did get very emotional standing there with uh, Ted's brother, Don. Mm. Uh, I was a selector for Victoria and, you know, before the game and, and you know, I started, uh, I started crying and uh, so I thought, oh, I'll, I won't stay out here watching this, I'll go downstairs. And I got downstairs and the players were warming up and I got tears running down. Mm. I thought, oh, I'm better off back upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back upstairs and, you know, uh, Neil Curley, who's, uh, you know, it was always a great mate of uh, Witten's and my own, and still is uh, a great bloke. And Curl came out onto the ground and stopped the car, you know, just to you know to say good luck and everything else. And he went back in. And I think Graham Corns was the coach, and uh, Curls went back in and said, "Forget what you ever you're going to say." He said, "We can't win." Really? Yeah. Mm. Not long after the great EJ dies, you speak at his funeral at um, St Patrick's Cathedral. How difficult a day was that for you? I think it's probably the, you know, one of the hardest things I've, I've ever done. Uh, you know, that morning, uh, living near the you know, Moorabbin ground where St Kilda played, uh, you know, I, I walked my dogs around the Oval and, um, you know, going through what I was going to say and uh, I broke down three times. Uh, I, I got back home and I, I said to my wife, Mary, and I said, I can't do it. And uh, she said, you'll make it. EJ was 61 or 2, wasn't he? The invincible EJ, and then he's gone. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And uh, just a, a wonderful person, and, and, you know, and thankfully I'm just as close to young Ted these days. EJ mm. belted you, though, didn't he? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. You know, you had no friends once you are out there. Yeah. Now, that, uh, the hits that you got and the famous black eyes, I want you to look up at the monitor, Bobby, and see if you recognise this bloke. <laughs> yeah, they weren't bad. I went into the guy last game at Collingwood with uh, with two black eyes because I had my nose broken against Footscray the week before, and um, and then uh, just before half time, I uh, was about to mark the kick off from the Collingwood fullback, and John Rantel was also going to mark oh. it, and we collided heads and both went down, and you know the, the, the Collingwood stand. Yeah, it was starting to count us out. <laughs> and then uh, I had, uh, you know, stitches over my eyes at half time and went out after half time. And, uh, and, and the late Len Thompson, who was a, always been a close mate of mine, uh, someone I just loved, terrific. Uh, I, I ran into a Len Thompson shepherd and he opened up the other eye. You're there with Marion. Uh, how long have you been married to Marion? Uh, it's, I think you it's, better get this right, mate. I think it's 54 years. 54 years. Um, Post football, there's been a few hurdles in your life. It's not quite 54. I think it's 54 next week. <laughs> um, Marion had a bout of cancer at one point, and then and last year, I mean, the trauma with your hip problems. I mean, that weighed heavily on her, didn't it? Ah, oh, look, uh, you know, she's in remission from the cancer, and you know, thankfully. And uh, but once it's there, you know, there's always a worry uh, mm. And, mm. and such, and then. Yeah, you know, last year uh, with my own illness, she was just fantastic, and, and um, you know everybody was fantastic. You know. Talk us through 2013. You know, um, Let's go back to March 2013. You go into hospital for what you thought was a routine hip replacement, correct? Yep. What happened from there? Uh, you know, I thought I was going to be there for a week, and so uh, you know I didn't have to organise things at home or anything like that. You know, I was going to be okay. Uh, five and a half months later, I was still there, and mm. uh, uh, they decided to take all the replacement hips that they'd gone through with washouts and and such, to take them out and, and put in what they call a spacer, uh, which is a, a bit of nothing. But the bugs don't like that. Yeah. Um, so you had an infection. You uh, yeah. an infection developed after you had your first hip replacement. Yeah. Uh, apparently, three bugs that had got in there. Yeah. How many times did they operate on your hip? Uh, it's, you know, I think I had three washouts, uh, and uh, so it was. You know, that was you know, sort of four times. Yeah. Uh, 
And then I was, you know, pretty crook after the last one. Had done. And then they said, look, we, next operation, you know, we go to St Vincent's because there's no ICU here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, but, you know, uh, let me say that, uh, you know, everybody, the nurses, the doctors at both the Vimy House and, and uh, you know, St Vincent's were just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and the general public... Uh, you know, I, I, maybe we love is. you, mate. People care about their <laughs> legends, and the people were just fantastic. You know, a lot of the people I, I've never met. Uh, you know, uh, guys I'd gone to school with. Uh, yeah. You know, came and visited me, and hadn't seen them for years and years and years. Everybody was just fantastic, and um, you know, uh, you said about you know Marion. You know, she and her girlfriends are you know in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, Marion lost ten kilograms. Mm. Uh, Hasn't put a hasn't put a thing back on. You you uh, lost a lot of weight, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I lost a little bit more than that. Yeah, like how a, much? Yeah, you know, I lost twelve kilograms. Yeah, uh, and I put it all back on. How how seriously ill were you at the worst of of your time in hospital last year? Oh, I don't really remember that. You know, but you know, uh, I wasn't well. Bobby, we all know that illness and cancer and death are part of life for us. You lost one of your three boys at nineteen, Darren. I mean. You, You've, you don't speak about it. Um, I've never heard you talk about it. That must have been an unbelievable blow to you. Yeah, you know, it's it's not a time that, you know, that I look back, uh, you know, really, I didn't handle it well. Uh, you know, Marion had the strength of the family, not me. Uh, and, uh, you know, I blame football uh, because they, Caulfield had just made the grand final. And Darren was playing for Caulfield. He was playing for Caulfield, yeah, yeah. yeah in the VFA. And, was Michael uh, there then? Uh, you know, Michael's our youngest and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and such. Um, Brett played, also played at Caulfield. Mike played at Oakley because he didn't want to go to Caulfield. Uh, but it, it, it changed their lives. It changed all our lives. Uh, and, and once again, it was, it was Marion who had the, had the strength. Mm. Uh, you know, and as I said, it's not something... I'm proud of, but these things uh, these things happen in life, uh, mm. and uh, you know, unfortunately, um, that was the way it went. Accidents do happen, and mm. uh, was it a car accident? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You said you were. I understood you to say that you were dirty on football. Um, did you say that? Yeah. Well, I I blame football. Uh, you know, it. it um, you know, they were celebrating and make the, to make the grand final and, uh, and and such, but that was stupid. Uh, you do stupid things at stupid times, and uh, not stupid times. You know, I mean, I, I can only, I can't imagine it, but they're just times that probably test us to a point we've never been at before. Yeah, yeah, but look, uh, once again, it was Marion, as I said, who mm. had the had the strength, and uh, you know, uh, it's it's been great. I want to ask you about coaching. You had two years as playing coach of South Melbourne. Was that a good idea? No, uh, it was a probably a great experience. Um, but, uh, you know, it's very hard to, to, to play and coach, uh, you know, particularly mm. the way, you know, uh, I felt about playing and, and such. Almost inevitably, we would have thought Bob Skilton would have coached South Melbourne after he retired as a player, and it never happened. I'd had a disagreement with the committee at, at South at the time, and uh, over, and a couple in particular. Those things don't matter. Uh, well, they do matter because you didn't coach the footy club that you spent 16 years playing for. Yeah, um, but I had coached them and uh, and such that, uh, and you know, as much as I love the club, uh, if you're not talking to the people who run the club, then you're not likely to be coach. No, but and, I, and you... I wanted to coach, so. I, you know, I took on the job at Melbourne, mm. uh, and Melbourne had lost the last ten games straight the year before, and uh, and then we proceeded to lose the first nine games straight in in my first year, and uh, I agreed with everybody else. I had been stupid, uh, <laughs> but on what, on what? What do you mean? Do you mean that literally or not? <laughs> oh, no, no, facetiously, because mm. uh, when the clubs lost 19 consecutive games, you know things aren't exactly rosy. Yeah, uh, yeah. But whatever. Uh, but uh, a couple of years later, I do have a trophy at home that said Herald Sun Coach of the mm. Year. Your mates that you played with, Witten, um, Murray, oh, Nichols, all those guys, they called you Chimp. 
Were you ever offended by the, the tag chimp? No, I, I wasn't, but my mother was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, okay. Did she seriously take offence at that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't like it, but, uh, yeah, look, you, know, you, 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 you win a nickname sometimes and, mm. and you wear it, particularly with your mates, and, mm. and, and the, more you, the more you say, don't call me that, the more they're going to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you uh, probably seen HBA broke at the time, but was it all worth it? All the things that have had, we've seen that famous <laughs> illustration in the sun of the time of, of all the injured, injuries that you'd suffered. So looking back... All worth it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm, uh, I, I, you know, I'm going along all right, you know, and, uh, and whatever. I've got a few aches and pains, but mm. hasn't everybody. What's your proudest <laughs> single moment, Bobby, in your footy life? Uh, in my footy life, yep. uh, you know, being uh, that shot that you showed me earlier, uh, of, of the players up on the, on the rostrum. I understand that, but you didn't do anything that day other than pass the cup over. And I know there's the emotional link to the footy club, but the thing, you're in a sense of your own achievement. Uh, no, that meant more to me. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, to be able to present that cup. And I remember when I was standing out in the ground holding it, standing there on my own, and I kept thinking to myself, I'll, I'll wave this to the crowd. <laughs> my team has just won and, uh, you know, my club has, has just proven, you know, like, uh, you know, to go 75, 72 years, you know, uh, you know, literally with nothing. And, and we didn't have respect and, and such. And, and then, you know, you know, when we beat Hawthorne, you know, you know I stood there representing, you know, my club or mm -hmm. our club and we have earned respect and, and, that, and that's just great. And, uh, you know, I love my club and uh, it's, it's been great. You're a legend. I don't know what we say about a bloke who's won three Brownlows and nine club best and fairest. You're a legend. Everyone loves you. It's been a privilege to have you on, Bobby. Well done. Thanks very much, Mike. It, it, it's been great. Um, you know, I, I, I love my footy. I know. <laughs> Next Monday on Open Mic, his dramatic fall from grace became headlines across Australia. Sex, lies and videotapes, Ricky shame, we didn't have sex, the Nixon scandal, drugs probe, give him the boot. Were you addicted? Um, it's a good question. Ricky Nixon. No one's ever asked me what happened to me. His side of the story. I'll tell you something else about that hotel room, but I'm going to keep short and sweet. Open mic next Monday, Fox Footy. This has been a Fox Footy production for Fox Sports.